Finally, it's axle swap day. I've had this 78 Toyota for a little bit. It's a little Sun Raider. It's like a 16 foot motorhome. It's got this Fuli in here. It's not a true dually. Uh, these are actually, this is kind of a one piece wheel. They're welded together. So this is a pretty strong setup. It's got a half ton axle in here. These things are hard to sell with a half ton in there because uh, to me it's simple math. This thing weighs 3,600 pounds wet with water and gas. The gross vehicle weight rating is, I think it's like 4,400. Um, so that gives you, you know, 800 pounds of payload for passengers and cargo, which should be sufficient for a rig this small. But people are afraid of these half ton axles because in the 80s, RV manufacturers just kept building these Toyotas longer and longer and longer. And before you knew it, you know, there were 6,000 pounds and this axle was never meant for that. So what would happen is the C-clip would break and the axle shaft would just bloop slide out while you're going down the road um, but the issue is people looking for a Toyota think that you need a one ton full float in every Toyota rig that's simply not true but this thing is hard to sell with a half ton axle back here so I got a one ton axle it just happens to be attached to the rest of the truck so there it is a full floater this is a 80 something. This used to be a motorhome. It's got a 22 RE automatic transmission with like 37,000 miles. I put a new tank in there and this thing runs and drives, but I really only need that axle. And I don't even really need it because this setup is fine, but I'm gonna do it anyway for marketability. So what this entails, basically, I think this is a direct bolt-in. Um, I've measured nine inches from the diff housing to the flange. Um, the yoke there where it bolts together to the drive shaft, so I shouldn't even mo have to modify the drive shaft. It should just go right in here. So I'm gonna leave the sway bar alone. This thing has an add a leaf on here. See these bolts here will add tension. If you tighten those nuts down, it kind of draws this together. I can leave all that stuff there. All I've really got to do is uh, take the u-bolts off and the brake line and the drive shaft and then the axle can kind of float around so I'll just send it out one way and then drop the other end down the middle of the truck and pull the axle out and put the one ton full floater in here so let's see how that process goes now I've got basically everything disconnected the bolts are out of the drive shaft it's ready to pull out so I'm just pulling the parking brake cable out of the drum assembly. So basically, I don't know if the one ton is going to use the same type cable um, connection, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on the truck for now. So I'm pulling the shoes and all the stuff off the brakes. I do have everything to rebuild this axle. So when this goes back on the other truck, it'll have new brakes. The wheel cylinders are shot on this and uh, I think the reason my rear brakes weren't working is this rubber brake hose is just so swollen on the inside it's not letting fluid pass through. So I'm going to disassemble this and then there are just two little bolts that hold the park brake cable um, to the backing plate of the drum assembly and I'll take those two little bolts out and then the cable can slide through the back plate. I've got everything disconnected. The brakes are off, the parking brake cables are disconnected, the drive shaft is off. So now this axle is just kind of floating. Just hanging out in there. So I can get that thing this way, then drop it down. But I am going to need a helper for this one. I am not going to do this by myself. And she's out. And you know what's amazing? Look at that fluid. Still amber colored. You gotta love 70s Toyotas. I did have to disconnect the sway bar to get enough room between the chassis frame rail and the leaf springs to get the backing plate to squeeze through. 
the sway bar was holding enough tension on the leaf pack that uh, without disconnecting the sway bar, it was not gonna go through there. So now that I've got this out, I'll do the same process for the one ton to get it out and bring it over here. <laughs> right. Here's the one ton axle, so I got this thing out. I left the parking brake cables attached so I didn't pull the drums apart. Um, what I've got to do now is take the spring perches and move them inboard about three quarters of an inch on each side because the frame on this 78 is slightly narrower. The spring packs are slightly narrower, about an inch and a half or so, than on this 85. So I just wrapped up getting that half ton back into this 85. I had to move the spring perches out about three quarters of an inch to make them wider to go on this truck. And then I had to drill out the pinion flange bolt holes uh, because that bolt pattern is a little bit different on the, I think it's post 84 drive shaft. So the 78 drive shaft um, had a just, I mean, it was just like an eighth inch off. So basically I just rotated until I was in the offset and then drilled them out. So now that pinion flange has eight holes in it. Uh, it could go back onto a regular half ton drive shaft pre-84 or just leave it like that. Went ahead and stuck the single wheel back on here instead of uh, Instead of these, in my opinion, awesome fake dually, those are good ones. So, let's see how this thing performs. So here's the one ton axle. I've got to move the spring perches in about an inch and a quarter on each side because the 78 has a narrower frame so the springs sit closer together and this little centering hole basically sits in the middle of the spring pack where that little fastener bolt goes through there uh, so right now the bolt that's on the truck lines up like right here on the edge so it just has to go inboard so then this will rest where it's supposed to, to center the pinion on the 78. So I just take my grinder and kind of clean up there um, all the way around it. And I'm going to take the plasma cutter and just kind of torch this thing off. And then you'll see how this one ton axle is beefed up compared to the half ton. It's got, this is basically like a giant gusset on the bottom of the axle housing. So as I shift this inboard, I'm gonna to have to trim the inside of the perch because you can see it goes up. So a little bit of modification, uh, but I should have this sorted here in another hour or so. And I've got the driver's side off. So now what I've gotta do is trim this inside bit Kind of raise it a little bit with the plasma cutter so it'll rest higher up. And I've got my marks on here so I can kind of keep alignment. You know, I dropped a dot down in the hole and I got my line there so I'll stay centered. And that's my measurement on the spring pack uh, from the pen in the spring to the other pen is about 37 inches. So I'll get that one cleaned up, resting level, uh, tacked into place, and then we'll do this one. A little bit of progress, haven't touched that side yet. This side I just tacked into place, so you see that's where it was. I moved it in about an inch and a quarter. My paint lines are still lined up, and I've got a bubble level that I've been using. So I can see that's level. 
and this is my uh, my base comparison and so that this tells me the axle is not really sitting perfectly level on my shop floor it's probably these jack stands so the left side of this perch is a little bit high but if I compare it over here and I lift the level and then I look under here I mean we're at, that's less less than a millimeter you see so I'm not worried about that so I used the MIG to tack it into place now I'm gonna go ahead and use a stick welder and get that puppy welded on there and then cut this one off and then I will use this as my base comparison. Now I've got the driver's side welded up. So I use the stick welder at like uh, 80 amp, something like that. So that puppy's in place. And I'm gonna repeat the process for the passenger side. I just cut this off, it's gonna scoot over to my line. Then I'll get that welded on there, tacked with the MIG and then welded with the stick, but I want to show you the level of penetration on these perches from the factory. So you see how this is still real smooth, uh, just like a almost a freshly machined surface. So that tells me from the factory they're probably welding at 70 or 80 amps and just penetrating about a third of this perch onto the axle housing. I don't see much penetration into the housing here. So I basically ground off the weld on the outside and then used the plasma cutter just to kind of zip through what was remaining. And then I just kind of smacked it with a hammer and it loosened up and came off. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and get it positioned to tack into place. And then give it a weld. And then this thing is ready to toss back in the truck. So now I've got this all welded up and painted so it doesn't rust. And it's under the RV, under the truck. So the next thing to do is make sure this drive shaft is going to mate to this flange. Um, also, side note, I know I knew the spacing on, on these perches had to be 37 inches because if we look here on top of the leaf pack, see this little stud? Each leaf pack has one. Here's the other one. And I could just measure, you know, from, let's say, left, far left to far left is effectively the same as center to center. So I knew where these holes had to be placed on those perches. So I know my spacing is correct on the perch mounts. And because I had the bubble level on it, I know they're at the same, my pinion angle is gonna be the same as it was before. So now this is the last thing. I've taken the flange off of the half ton rear end and just laid it up against this one and put my little dots on there. So I'm gonna take my impact, pull this nut off, put this on the drill press, drill out these four holes, reassemble it and get it. I think what I'm gonna do is just lower the truck until I can just kind of easily tuck this on top of the leaf pack. Now I've done a couple of pilot holes and taken it back to the car to make sure that I'm lined up on these new bolt holes. Now that I've got a pretty darn good fit, I'm going to go ahead and take this to a 5 16 which is uh, just about perfect for the bolts that came off the truck. So I will finish this up and get it back on the truck. And my test fit is a success. I've got all four, one, two, three, four bolts in there. And that five sixteenths was just the perfect diameter uh, for these bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this flange back on the differential and get that thing in the truck. And there it is, one ton axle in the 78. Drive shaft is hooked up. I'm just going to put the U bolts in here, clamp everything down, throw some shocks on there. A little bit more modification. The half ton had both shocks in the front, 
This one ton on the 85 pickup had one shock in the front, one on the back. So I've got a bit more welding to do, but I think I'm just about there. I'm on the last step, finally. Now I'm trying to fit some shocks to this thing. So I've got two new shocks on the 78. The mounting is a little bit different. So you see this lower shock mount runs left to right. It's in front of the axle. The one on the passenger side put, actually put the shock mount behind the axle because on the 85 truck, you had one shock in front, one behind. So I'm just gonna modify these bottom plates. Uh, they go under the leaf pack. So what I'm doing, basically I'm cutting this out, just grind all the way around, grind off the welds there, and then bang it with a hammer until it comes out. So then I'm gonna flip it like that. So the shock is gonna go on that way so it will match how it's hung on the top, which is how it was on that other axle, that, that half-ton axle that came out. So essentially, I'm just going to weld a little gusset that comes out about a half inch, uh, just to get the shock kind of off of this plate a little bit, and get this welded back up, and then repeat the process for the driver's side. And there we have it, one-ton axle, successfully installed in a 78 Toyota Sun Raider. So I've got my shock mounts both in front of the axle like it was on the original half-ton axle. All I've got to do now is get some new sway bar end links for this sway bar. It's just kind of jiggling around right now, but the end link bolts were so rusted. I need to replace those, but that's it. Uh, didn't get new tires. Here, these are about to explode but uh, would I do this again probably not especially not on a rig that is unnecessary this thing uh, weighs the same as the new Toyota Camry which is what blows my mind about people saying that you have to have a one-ton full float in these little rigs there's no way that thing was ever going to get loaded enough to make a C-clip break and slip an axle. But at any rate, it's done.